Hello everyone. Today in this video, we will be talking about USMLE Step 1 exam. Again, we have Dr. Khan and Dr. Minhaj with us, two brilliant internal, uh, international medical graduates from Daw Medical College, Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, I would start with Dr. Minhaj. The first question regarding USMLE Step 1 would be, how much time did you take to prepare for your USMLE Step 1 exam? So I took my step one uh, when I was doing my house work and uh, I had my major words then. So it, it was very fragmented and it was not continuous. So it was like eight to nine months along with house job with a lot of wide, wide breaks because house job was really, really tough. But, uh, uh, but in that like nine to eight to nine months. So basically you graduated and then you started house job and then you took uh, nine months, but they were all during your house job. And again, for yeah. those people who don't know what house job is, house job is an, a mandatory 12 months internship in India and Pakistan and other countries in order to get your practicing lessons after finishing your MBBS or medical degree. So nine months with house job. I must say kudos to you because it's difficult. Dr. Khan. Yeah, it was uh, it was around uh, I would say six months for me. Uh, and again, just like Ariba said, it's not that continuous because mine was not doing house, mine was doing final year. But there was a, uh, it was the first time I was actually preparing for a USMLE exam. So it you you need you need time. You need to understand how the system works, what things you should be doing. So all that comes into place. So I, it took around six months for me. Uh, and yeah, that was it. So you did, took it during your final year. And again, for those who are uh, not familiar with our, our education setup, so we don't, we have five year of MBBS medical school and we take the professional or final prof exams after every year. Uh, and in order to uh, advance to the next year, we have to pass that. Uh, it can it consist of written exams, which are mostly MCQs based exam and oral exam or VIVA. Some places have stopped doing that, but most of uh, are still doing it. So basically, if we are not mandated to take any USMLE or anything other than those professional exams in order to advance. So a lot of people nowadays, they are taking USMLE exams during second, third, fourth, or even final year of MBBS. But majority of it are still taking it after they graduate. So Dr. Khan took six months during final year. Dr. Minhaj took nine months during house job. So uh, in their own selves, both things are very difficult to do because it requires significant amount of time and it requires a lot of uh, what I would say to sustain pressure because final year and house job, they are both very tough. Dr. Khan, what study material or resources uh, in terms of textbooks or uh, QBanks did you use and would you recommend? Yeah, sure. So uh, obviously there is UWL, the standard question bank source that is for all USM exams. So that was there. Uh, then for step one, there's first aid step one, which is excellent book for step one. It has all the information in a concise fashion. And my pattern was simple. I would just do you will annotate in first aid. Do you will annotate in first aid. So by the end of my completion of you world, I did not need to do you world again, except for like my incorrects. And everything was right inside my first aid. So I would just give it a second read and that's how I got done. Outside of those two main resources, which which everything which uh, you know, just surround these resources. These are the two primary things. These are the core, if I have to say. Outside of that, there's Anki, which uh, I use for step one. Uh, flashcards for the basic sciences like biochemistry, pharmacology, because they are very, very volatile. They require that constant memory. Mm -hmm. So for that, Anki worked, worked work for Wonders. And because I was a final year student and the basic concepts had sort of drifted away by that time, uh, to be able to just getting back to those concepts, I would say I use video, video resources like BNB which is an excellent video resource for step one because of the way he just explains everything and they're short. They're not too lengthy. They can be covered. I would just be traveling, uh, for example, from point to my university and I would just watch a couple of videos. So those three resources alongside Anki and uh, nothing else really. Amboss also, I did try at the very end of it. I got a subscription and just tried a few question uh, blocks and I, I not much of that. But that can also come in handy. Any kind of question bank uh, outside of you, especially such as the AMBOS, can definitely come in handy. 
Okay. So you did not do the Kaplan that many years ago we used to do and not the Kaplan lectures, not the books. So the BNB videos you mentioned, are they uh, via like subject wise, like microbiology, pharmacology uh, or some other manner they use? So yeah, it is it's a subject wise. So you have uh, subjects and modules both. For example, if it's a basic science like micro, so microbiology would have its entire series. And then there, if there's a system like cardio cardiovascular system, then it will have its own series. So we can go to system wise, and that is the approach I followed for step one. There's again a conflict. Some people like a system wise approach. Some people like a mixed approach. Yeah. I followed the system wise approach in step one and the mixed approach for step two, um, for uh, different reasons. But um, for uh, the the fact that you mentioned Kaplan, uh, Kaplan is something that people definitely used to do. And even in our time, there was uh, when I was doing like first year, second year, that is when uh, people would recommend that for sci basic sciences like biochemistry, especially. Mm -hmm. But I think BNB kind of has replaced that in terms of uh, resource material. Most of the people have shifted to BNB because of the length, I would say mainly because Kaplan is too extensive. Some people. Okay, just so the, the BNB, uh, do they also have the books like Kaplan used to, or just the video lectures? Uh, it is video lectures. It's the slides of those video lectures because the video lectures are manifested on the slides. So it's just slides printed out in book forms. There's no official book, I think. I understand. Okay. And Dr. Minhaj, what about you? So I did UWorld and I did uh, BNB videos and along with FA. I started UWorld right away and then I was doing FA side by side because I knew that I wanted to give it in pass and fail. So I, the score did not really matter to me much. But even then, I wanted, I knew that step two scores depend a lot on step one scores so i was studying uh i just i just i think that i did everything that i could even though it was pass and fail i think that's very important because it, the step one is all over the place it's very volatile it's not it's it's it, there's so many resources it's not straightforward like step two i think step one is the hardest of all the step exams and uh so i did like a pharmacology and microbiology from uh from what do you call it? The animated Sketchy. videos. Sketchy, right? Yeah. Sketchy, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I did from Sketchy. And then what I would do is that I would watch a video and then I would do the Zanki card. Zanki is a pre-made deck of Anki for step one. And I would do those cards. And then it just it reiterates everything and you learn it very well. Because microbiology and pharmacology are very volatile. I think the only thing that worked for me was this method. Other than mm -hmm. that, I did biochemistry and all the other subjects from B and B, and I did Pathoma videos too. And along with that, you were. So everything was just going side by side. And I didn't. I do not recommend Amboss because I think that Amboss is too much for step one. And uh, it's just too, it, it just makes things very difficult. You can easily pass without Amboss. Yeah. Okay. So Pathoma, so I again, Pathoma is something that I remember even from our time. So did you read the book or lectures or both? I just watched the videos. Also, okay. the dirty USMLE videos are really good. And Randy Neal videos for uh, biostatistics. And dirty USMLE videos are also very good. Okay. All right. Uh, Dr. Minhaj, while you are at the topic, the next question is uh, the self-assessment exams or the mock exams, how many did you take? And uh, how long before your exam you actually took? So I think it's uh, something of the past. I don't remember really much about it. But I think they were like 525 something, 25, 20, 29, 30, I think. So I did those. And I was just, I, I knew that I was passing those with good scores. So I think that it, it was enough for me. And then UWSA 1 and 2, I think I just, I scored like 240s in one and 250s in another one. So it, it was safe. So yeah. So uh, now those, because since step one is pass and fail, these mock exams, are they still uh, telling you the exact scores? Um, now people are very, you know, uh, brave and courageous and they just give one uh, assessment and then they go and sit the exam. I, I'm, I'm not like that. I have to do everything in my power to make sure that I will pass the exam and I'm not very okay. courageous when it comes to that. So I just make sure that I'm passing all of my exams and assessments, even if mm -hmm. it's pass and fail. Most of the people these days, they're not even passing those uh, assessments and they pass the exam. So it's very risky, something that I wouldn't do, but people do. So is there, so what my understanding is that the, the self-assessment exams are still giving you a three-digit score. So no, any, they're, uh, they are not? They're not. For me, UWSA 1 and 2 gave me a three-digit score, but the NBMEs, they are doing uh, your chances of passing. 
They only okay. tell you how much how many chances of passing you are. Oh, okay. So they tell in terms of like what percentage or yeah, percentage. You have a ninety percent chance of passing. You have a seventy percent chance of passing. Yeah. Okay. And in your opinion, and then we'll also ask Dr. Khan that is there a cutoff like people who just want to pass it, and is there like a cutoff where if you are scoring, the chances of passing are below that, you should actually maybe delay exam or study more. Any cutoff in your opinion? I think that if you're passing up in 90s or all of your NBMEs and you're doing UWSA 1 and 2 and passing those exams, I think that's it safe. But again, there are many people who think that, you know, like who, who do not pass these exams and they pass the, the real exam. So I think it's very subjective, but I think that you should be safe rather than sorry again. So what you would recommend is at least 80 to 90s. Yeah. Okay. And Dr. Khan? So my time NBMEs were actually scored. Uh, so because of my step one being scored, uh, I scored a two sixty six on step one, and uh, in that time, I, obviously all of the assessments mattered on how much I, am I scoring, what is uh, the the point I'm getting to, and if I have to see the current situation and see at the past real situation, although Ariba would kill me, but I think that any if anybody is like uh, if anybody is just passing uh, their NBMEs, they have like 70 percent. Anybody who has got like um in you will correct percentage if I have to talk about anything above 60, I think they can easily pass the exam and they should not be delaying it because that just um distorts plans, it adds to anxiety, it adds to panic. So I, I feel it's safe enough to just go and go out there with the step one thing. Okay, so basically NBME, if you are scoring above 65 to 70 percent chances of passing, in your opinion, is safe enough. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so you, Dr. Khan, when you took your exam, it was, of course, they were scoring it. So uh, how long before your actual exam, you took those NBMEs? Uh, again, it was the one month frame. Uh, it was one month back when I actually started doing those. And mine were 25 to, I don't know where the numbers have went by now, but 25 to 30, mine were, were 25, 26, 27. So yeah, all the way up to okay. 36 NBMEs I did give. And uh, all just like four day intervals. After four day intervals, I would give an NBME. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I gave the new WSAs uh, one and two. So that was my order for assessments. Uh, in uh, It was nearly one month, but just slightly more than that. So in uh, in step one, because at your time it was scored. So UW self, because I remember from my time, for step one, we were not taking UWSA. It was con considered futile at that time. So now has the trend changed? People are taking UWSA even for step one? I think it's still the same. The, my, the people too takes uh, UWSA because, uh, again, it's the closest to your actual exam. And the way it would predict is not something that any NBA, NBMA would predict or anything else would predict. So okay. assessments are something people love because the, of the time preparation thing, hmm. the entire way that they prepare you for the exam. So everybody takes okay. it, I think. Okay. Because in, that's what I'm saying. So in our time, for step one, people were just taking NBME and they were not taking UWSA because they felt that UWSA is not ideal for step one. So I think now what you are saying is trend has changed and people are relying more on UWSA for step one as well. The last question, Dr. Khan, any tips and tricks for exam day for step one? So obviously, because it will be the first exam, uh, USN exam that people will take. So the first thing that you need to understand is obviously anxiety, uh, something that we, something obviously that we all face, but we need to manage it because I personally believe that whatever you get in the exam as a result is like at least 20% of that is the way you perform on the exam. 80% can be your preparation. But if that 20% goes wrong, then you're just left with the 80% to pass your exam. So that is something very critical and that is something you build on yourself with time because it cannot be that you're not thinking of the exam throughout. You have to think of the exam. You have to think of how you would approach it. Take guidance, take um, advices from your friends, how they manage their break times. What is this orientation like? Just get an idea inside of the entire test center. What happens when you go so that you are just a little bit prepared in your mind. You're settled in your mind. Uh, what can we take for snacks? All these little things matter in the end. So that is it. Uh, I think the main thing is understanding how to perform and just being well prepared for the day. So I think that, you know, everybody, uh, this is the first exam and everybody's again nervous and 
I think that it's very important to understand that there are things that are under our control and there are things that are not under our control and we can try our best and the result is not in our hands. And you have to accept that, you know, you have to come to terms with the fact that I did my best and now leave the rest to God. So I think that really helps in calming your nerves because, you know, there you cannot be, control, micromanage everything that happens in your life. There, must, there will be questions that you won't know. I remember my biochemistry questions were so weird. I, I still don't know what the answer to them are. And I think that it's very important to know that there will be questions like that, which will really go over your head. And that's totally fine. You cannot, uh, you cannot know 100% of any exam. Just do what you know and move on and just give it your best shot. And, and exactly. I remember, especially for step one, is that they have some research-based question, which they put in the, uh, the real exam just to see how many people would actually mark them right. So, yes. So, so if you see that a question is extremely difficult, it's likely that uh, everyone will uh, not be able to mark that right. So that is very important. Well, I would like to say thank you to both of you for joining us again. And best of luck for your exam, uh, sorry, match day, match day, I'm sorry. <laughs>